Good morning. Welcome to the Art of a Life Well Lived. I am Christine Regan Lake, and I, we are back for another What Are Your Blockages reading. So, if you have been watching my videos, you know that these are timeless videos. So, whenever the message finds you and it resonates for you, there's something in it for you. If it doesn't resonate with you, it's not for you. Don't try to make it fit if it's not for you. <laughs> and you can always check back to another reading if uh, if it doesn't work for you and it, it's not resonating. So, we'll see. So today, today was an interesting journey, and today was. Um, about the narcissist. <laughs> so the first card that came up for you was a change in direction, whoever this is for. So the first thing that came up is that the universe is, time, is trying to tell you that it's your, um, to open your heart um, to love and guidance and you're protected now and in the future. So follow your path to the happy, happy outcomes you desire. So it's a change in direction, which means you wanna put the past behind you and you want to move forward with an open heart. Now, <laughs> two, um, two narcissistic cards came up. The first one was the narcissistic triangulation. So you're being triangulated. So with regard to the past that, you're, um, that hurt you, there was a narcissistic triangulation where they basically, um, basically triangulated you, where they tried to put another person in between you, put someone against you, and then there was a smear campaign, a narcissistic smear campaign. They just try, tried to destroy your reputation, smear you to make you look like you were, uh, you were the bad partner, <laughs> everything's your fault, and that's a very common um, pattern for the narcissist once they've decided that you see them for who they are and they can no longer um, pull the wool over your eyes, you see them exactly for who they are. They usually do the discard where they, they drop you unexpectedly, very quickly, and then they do a smear campaign basically to turn everybody against you so that um, they they, they look, come out looking on top, right? It was all that person's fault, that person's a bad person. So they smear your name and try to put everybody against you and they triangulate you and and, and, and put you in third party triangulations where they, whether they do it with like a friend of yours or a family member, you know, things like that. So it's narcissistic triangulation and a narcissistic smear campaign. So when I asked for further um, clarity on this situation, what came out was that you are overworking and need balance. And you also may have a health issue with a fungal infection. Now, you were encouraged to do a sacral chakra cleanse. So a sacral chakra cleanse. Um, you could have potentially bladder issues. So this fungal infection could be affecting your bladder or lymph system. So you might want to do, you could either do rife frequencies for um, bladder or lymph, or you could do a rife frequency binaural beats meditation for infection, fungal infections. You could do either of those. You could do, um, you know, some, an, an antifungal herbal detox cleanse. They have those as well. So you just want to take care of your sacral chakra. You probably want to do a sacral chakra meditation to clear the energy, uh, but then also to do something that's going to um, directly go to work on the body. So maybe an herbal, antifungals, um, protocol, things like that. So um, the other issue that came up, which it's not surprising, was intestines. Um, so you are struggling with anger, anxiety, sadness, and you have too much anxiety. So you need to embrace meditation. If you're gonna have that change in direction, which was the first card, if you're gonna have a change in direction to have a better moving forward, um, you really need to do a, 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 a total change in life. You've gotta stop overworking. You've gotta stop overworking and you've got to release yourself from whoever this narcissist was, the one that was putting you in triangles and who was smearing your name. You wanna clear your sacral chakra and you probably also wanna do a uh, sexual cord cutting if you were if this narcissist you'll know if the narcissist the narcissist could be a boss the narcissist could be a friend um you know it could be whoever but if you if the narcissist if you know who this is 
and the narcissist was someone that you were having a sexual relationship with, then I would definitely encourage you to do a sexual cord cutting as well. When I, when I rolled the dice to find out who the potential um, narcissist could be or, or if the person who could be affected by the narcissist, Sagittarius was com came up specifically for that. Um, but in general, the three signs that came up for this reading in general was Leo, Sagittarius, or Virgo. So if you are a Leo, Sagittarius, or Virgo, or if you're dealing with a Leo, Sagittarius, or Virgo, you might want to pay attention to this reading. <clears throat> the numbers that came up when I rolled the dice were three, four, which could either be the individual numbers, three, four, or it could be 34, or it could be 43, nine, 10, and 99. So three, four, 34, 43, 99, 10, and nine. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. So after what came up next, after the, um, the whole piece about the narcissist was that you have giving and receiving issues, so you need to work on allowing yourself to receive. Part of the reason, you know, your, your pattern of overworking and need balance, it's because you are, tend to be an overgiver. And so your body is saying, it's time for that to end. You gotta start learning how to put yourself first, start learning how to say no to things that don't work for you, and start embracing self-love and self-care. You have too much burden and responsibilities on your shoulders, so I don't know if you've got a tightness in the area of your shoulders. You might want to go have a massage, but you need to learn how to delegate. There, the, the second theme was, the first theme was the narcissist. The second theme is that you, you work too hard. You don't know how to balance. You don't do enough self-care to take care of yourself, and you're being asked to easy does it, you know, just pull back. It's too much, you're doing too much, and you're not taking care of yourself, and you're being encouraged to get out into the fresh air. You need to enjoy nature. Nature will help you to relax. Nature can be a meditation in and of itself, but your body and your emotional state and your spirit wants you to really do what is required to find more balance in your life, to start loving yourself. So the next thing that came up was taking a leap of faith. God wants you to take a leap of faith when it comes to love, undying love. So if you are willing to take the leap of faith, open your heart, heal your narcissistic wounds, what is waiting for you is undying love. So that's the exciting part, right? And you're being encouraged not to back down. Brigitte says, do not back down, which means that you may come up with resistance, and the don't, the don't back down I definitively got was about with yourself. Don't back down in terms of facing these wounds and having the discipline to do the healing work that is required to heal from this narcissistic situation. Narcissistic trauma bonding, the narcissistic relationship can be incredibly challenging to to heal and get over because of the trauma bonding, you know, the, the positive and negative and positive and negative, it literally makes you addicted to that person. That's what trauma bonding is. Trauma bonding is not love. So don't back down. Do the work that is required to heal your heart, to release that narcissist from your, the vision that you've had for your life. You may have believed that this narcissist was a soulmate and someone you were supposed to be with forever. Uh, this storyline is telling you that's not that that's not true. <laughs> that may be a story that you're just telling yourself. So you need to ask for what you want, right? So if you want that undying love, you need to ask God in the universe to bring them to you or her to you, to bring them to you. So ask for what you want, but also ask for what you want in your relationships so that when you do connect with someone, you're not swallowing your truth and accepting things that don't work for you. Healthy self-love is about learning how to ask for what you want and not feeling guilty about it, knowing that you have the right to be happy and you have the right to ask for your needs to be met and valued and honored. 
You're being encouraged to release and surrender to this experience, to this, the bringing in of a divine love that will be a healthy love that you desire and that you deserve. And you have to be assertive. Um, what assertive means is about um, assertive in asking for you what you want, assertive also in being able to put up healthy boundaries and you're not going to repeat the patterns of the past with the narcissist, right? You're not going to, if someone violates your boundaries, you're gonna be assertive. You're gonna let them know that doesn't work for you and you're gonna speak up and say that, you know, those types of things went on in my past relationships and that is no longer what I am willing to put up with. I have raised my standards when it comes to relationships and so if we're gonna to be together, our communication has to be based on love, respect, kindness, and things like that, that you are not going to um, accept less than your worth. So the next thing was acceptance. So you want to um, accept it. So learning to accept is, especially with your healing from a narcissist, is it, sometimes we're so filled with anger and rage and resentment about how we were treated in a narcissistic relationship that we resist healing. We resist forgiving and moving on because we are, we are still filled with so much anger about what was done to us and the anger we feel towards ourself for allowing that stuff to happen. So you are being asked to embrace acceptance for the situation as a whole except that that's where you were at that moment when you were with that narcissist. You were doing the best you could with what you knew at that time, but you're now doing better. You are now healing and you are now raising your standards and what you used to accept in the past is no longer what you will accept in the future or the, the present or the future. So learning about acceptance is huge. They also want you to notice the signs. <laughs> notice the signs that your things are going along and synchronistically that you are moving in the right direction. Notice and pay attention to the signs, both good and bad, right? So a sign could be you meet someone and wow, one of those narcissistic flags go up and you go, you know what? In the past, I used to ignore those signs. I'm not gonna ignore those signs anymore. I'm gonna pay attention to them but also notice the signs of when someone is being consistent, when someone is being honorable, when someone is, there are the green flags that say green is go. So you wanna notice both. You're gonna tell yourself, your subconscious mind and your conscious mind that I am in touch with my intuition, I trust my intuition, and I'm gonna pay attention and listen to the signs. I'm not going to you know, delude myself any longer like I used to do in the, in the past. And you will make steady progress. As long as you engage in this process of healing from this narcissistic relationship, you will make steady progress. You just have to hold the vision, trust the process, and keep doing the work. Blocks in terms of moving on that you need to be aware of with regard to healing the narcissistic uh, relationship of the past is that you may have some failure blueprints in your subconscious mind where you know I'm a failure everything I do fails I'm never gonna have this kind of love that I want you have to heal and make peace with this failure blueprint you need to release it because it's not true you're not a failure you know life is an evolution we evolve and grow and mistrust so mistr the failure blueprint and the mistrust um, and abuse beliefs you keep you overly de they keep you overly defensive that you can't trust people but if if you don't if you don't resolve those things if you taking that leap of faith will require you to let go of the mistrust and the failure blueprint right because if you have the failure blueprint you'll quit before you start you'll say you'll find every reason that a new person who could be the perfect and most ideal partner for you 
you'll find every reason why they're the wrong person for you. You'll find it, you'll be super critical and you won't allow them to come in. So you have to heal this failure blueprint and the mistrust abuse beliefs that you have so that you have the courage and the strength to take the leap of faith so to, you can get that undying love. And you just have to remember to don't back down when you get scared and you have to be assertive. <laughs> you have to learn to ask for what you want, right? Learn to ask for what you want and then ask for what you want and then <laughs> release and surrender to the process, right? You can't be a control freak, but it's ask for what you want and then release it to the universe and surrender to how and when God wants to bring it to you. And as a recovering type a control freak <laughs> I don't even know if I'm recovered <laughs> you know, I do endeavor right but when you're a type a driver you just you know it's kind of hardwiring you know but um surrendering I remember when I got 20 years ago when I really do, started diving deep into my spiritual journey I remember I was at a healer and <laughs> she said that four letter word that's not four letters she said, you just have to surrender. <laughs> and my type A control freak bawled my eyes out. I was like, I, I, I need to do something. <laughs> so, so I know surrendering is not easy when you want what you want and um, you, know, you want it so desperately. You want to feel like there's something that you can do to control the outcome, but you really can't. You know, it's, uh, you got to surrender and release to the process and just trust god that he has your back and he's going to bring you what you want and it's all about <clears throat> holding the vision trust the process you know hold the vision trust the process and do your work just keep doing your healing work to <clears throat> lower your your barriers to be able to open your heart to welcome in that undying love that you so desire and deserve so that's my message for today i hope that helps somebody uh, i hope you get uh, found clarity again this reading is very specifically, um, there could be messages for anybody, but very specifically, uh, Leo, Sagittarius, and Virgo should pay attention to this message. And I hope you have a beautiful day. If you like this video, I hope that you would like, share, or uh, subscribe to my channel so I can get my messages out to those who need it. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.